Hey, what's up expats? It's Josh with Expats Everywhere. Today I'm bringing you an interview with a guy named John. He's from the United Kingdom and in this interview he talks about what it was like transitioning as an 18 year old living in London to a small town in the United States and then moving into the workforce in the US as an IT consultant. Now he has a budding career as a stand-up comedian and we're talking about things like what to expect, what's the visa process like, how much money that you need to start up, what you can expect to earn, what the healthcare system is like, and many more questions are gonna be answered. I've broken this interview up into two parts and make sure that you check out both. Hope you enjoy it, take care. So how should someone pack to move there and what's the weather like? So it depends what time of year you move. Okay. Because like when I moved to Bristol, um, I didn't figure out, I, fi I knew I was moving when it was like the end of summer, like August. Hmm. But I didn't realize I'd be there through winter. So I bought all summer clothes. And then when like December hit and it obviously drops into like freezing cold, I had like no coats or jackets or hoodies. I mean, I was a broke college kid as well. And I had super limited stuff I could bring with. I couldn't just go out and buy more clothes. You can go to TJ Maxx and like stack up on like winter clothes if you need it for like 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, for that, I mean, just whatever season you're going in, bring stuff for that season and, and then, then buy the rest everything else. yeah it's really not too bad like if you i mean if, if you're working and you've saved up 15 grand you're gonna be okay <laughs> right and uh you you catch all four seasons in atlanta is that right yeah it's kind of i know it, it doesn't get like brutal winters i think this like last winter it was before i moved here but it was like one of the first times it snowed in like 30 years or something you get like the biting cold um mm. but usually it doesn't like snow snow spring has been kind of nice like it kind of went from like 60 degrees to 80 degrees pretty quickly so you, it kind of skipped over that nice 70 degree days you got, i think we've got two or three of those and then it just gets too hot <laughs> um and then the i mean the summer anywhere in the in the uh, in the south is like you know it's like 90 plus degree days it just depends how humid it is like memphis was humid louis i know louisiana is just as bad if not worse mm. but i found memphis summers really really uncomfortable just because of how humid it was but I mean, Bristol and Nashville and Atlanta, the air seems a lot clearer. Okay. But I mean, it's still going to be way more humid than you've probably experienced in the UK. Good advice. All right, so we got to talk about something that is a, a, a pretty hot button topic, I think, in the US, which is uh, safety. A lot of people from the outside uh, are concerned about safety. So how safe is it there? And do you feel safe on a personal level? Um, I do, but I'm quite far out. So... I mean, you you kind of you you can Google around and pretty quickly find like what where the bad neighborhoods are, yeah. uh, which areas of the city you don't want to live in. Okay. Like Memphis was, I think it was basically like top three in the country for like violent crimes and that kind of and murders. Mm. But that tends to be a lot more of that is um, concealed to particular areas, and it usually ends up being like gang related, uh, drug related, and that kind of thing. I mean, there's so many websites now you can literally just Google in like a zip code. And it will tell you like what the crime rates are like there. Yeah, what they'll have like, heat maps. Yeah, like me and Kelly were looking at a place because we were looking to move a bit closer into Atlanta the other day, and she was like, "Oh, this one's a nice house, and it's it's a, it's a really good price." So I googled the um, zip code um, for one of like the crime the crime data websites, and uh -huh. it was like this is in like the ninety fourth percentile for violent crime in the US. Oof. You are like 180% more likely to get killed there than you are where you currently are. It was some ridiculous statistic, and it was. <laughs> she's like, "Well, it's still a good price." <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, you can Google that in a heartbeat. Okay. Um, usually, yeah, if you're going to be sort of somewhat out into the suburbs, there's not a whole lot. But I mean, again, depends. Really depends where you're at. How do you meet people, and what do you do for fun? Uh, meet people. I mean. Like, you should just work. You end up meeting people. There's always work events, people going out afterwards and that kind of thing. Um, obviously, I mean, I work in a uh, – where I work, there's a lot of younger people. Mm. So, you know, a lot more people tend to socialize. If you're working in, like, a more – like, an older kind of environment, then, yeah, I mean, people are going home to their families and not really doing anything. Where I do stand-up, I know a bunch of people from stand-up, so it's almost – I'm out doing that most nights of the week so i'm just around people doing that anyways how is the healthcare system and would you feel comfortable getting a procedure done in the u.s in, in atlanta let's say um so i had like a massive procedure done uh when i was in college because they found a tumor in my knee 
Oh, they had to have removed. It was like non-malignant, but it was. Uh, that's one of the things because I was in college. Um, like their whole insurance thing covered most of it. Okay. And where I had no income, um, it was one of those. It kind of it gets it gets struck off, but also they were getting a lot of money from the insurance from the college. So it wasn't like they were just taking zero money on it. They were right. not taking it. Um, outside of that, it terrifies me. If I'm honest, um, be honest. Yes. It, it really, it terrifies me. Like in England, you've got the NHS, mm-hmm. which is all publicly funded. Um, I mean, like I broke my nose when I was a kid and yeah, you're sitting waiting in the waiting room for like two, three, like longer than you would here mm. because there's, I mean, people get in fights and they'll go in. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot more of that kind of thing going on. But if obviously you've got a serious procedure, it, you're not going to have to like remortgage your house or lose your house because you got sick. Whereas here, the insurance is kind of expensive and the insurance isn't necessarily going to cover everything. Okay. It's, I mean, their, their whole business is by, you know, taking in more money than they give out. They're not just... It's not Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they're running a business, which I hate, if I'm honest. It's, it doesn't, it seems like, same as like schools um, and like prisons when they get privatized out here. It's like, these aren't things that you, why, like you shouldn't be able to seek to make money off of healthcare and that kind of, that, so that is, but it's one of the things it's, that's, that's just what it is. It's a capitalist free market society kind of thing, but mm-hmm. it terrifies me what could happen. If you're moving out here, you saved up 15 grand. Right. Uh, if you got sick in England, you know, you could still, you still got 15 grand. Okay. If you get sick here and you got 15 grand, great. You've got 10% of what you need or something like if it's a serious kind of thing. So yes, if something okay. serious were to happen to you, could you go back to the UK to get something done? Uh, yeah, I just, I'd put on my accent a bit thicker. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, All right, governor. Yeah, just broke my leg a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, yeah. So if if you're gonna get like, just I'd I'd go back to England in a heartbeat. Okay. Would you feel comfortable though getting a procedure done in the U.S.? Like not talking about the cost, but like in terms of competence and and care that is given. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, from my experience, I mean, it's just, I mean, America has world class everything. Okay. You know, I mean, yeah, it's just the the route to get there is terrifying. But right. yeah, I mean, if you can afford it, you've got good insurance that covers it, then pfft. yeah, I mean, even just dentists, like look at your teeth, you're American, you've been to a dentist, your teeth are gorgeous. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's worth it. You've got world-class people here in like every profession. Do you think that Atlanta is a good travel hub? Why or why not? Yeah, it's incredible. Cause it's like, it's one of the biggest airports in America. Mm-hmm. Um, it sucks. When I first flew out here, um, coming through customs is it takes like it took two and a half hours to get through customs, so I missed my connecting flight and we've just been on like a twelve hour flight from the UK. And then you sit and waiting to get through customs for two and a half hours, you grab your bags and they've got to wait another four hours for a new connect connecting flight. But if you're just flying to another city, I mean yeah, there's direct flights everywhere and because it's like a massive Delta Airlines hub. So I mean the flights are so much cheaper. Like when it was when I was looking at flights from Memphis, it was you know, like 400 bucks to fly to the West Coast or something. Whereas here it's like, oh, you know, they've got specials all the time. It's like like 60 bucks to fly to New York. And it's like, what? Wow. It's ridiculous. Like, this is the first time I've lived somewhere where it's cheaper to fly than it is to like just do a long drive. Wow, yeah. That's awesome. So let's, um, let's talk a little bit about your comedy career before we wrap up with some pros and cons. Uh, I like that you call it a career. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a, a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a career, John. I know it. You're gonna make it. Bi- you're gonna make it big, sir. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about that. Where do you where do you get your material? A uh, little bit of everything. So some okay. of it is just like funny stories of stuff that happened. Okay. Like um, it was uh, I I was eating a Malteser, which is like this English chocolate that's kind of like a, a whopper. Uh huh. And I was eating that, and I, it got lodged in my throat, and I started choking on it. Um, and then Kelly tried to give me the Heimlich maneuver, but she didn't know how to do it. So she basically she was holding my stomach, but like dry humping my back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had to like fight her off, and then try and cough this thing up. So it's just, I mean, little stories like that. I know I try and keep away from just like, oh, in America it's like this, but in England it's like this because it's like that kind of format is so outdated and it's too easy yeah 
you know, it's like cheesy. There's you didn't really earn it. Um, but that other stuff is just like you hear something or see something or notice something, and it just kind of like like ah, oh, that's a funny idea. And then it's like, how does that come together? Mm. Kind of thing. Do like, you do political uh, commentary at all? Um, not really. Okay. Not really. Like I make a few jokes about America, like how people say America is like God's favorite country, but every year there's like tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes. Like he's obviously trying to take you lot out. <laughs> um, and then the worst thing that happens to any other country is that you lot bomb them. <laughs> it's <laughs> just, so I mean, that's about as scathing as it gets, but now nah, not really like the political stuff because I mean, you hear some people will go for the political stuff, but it's so, it gets very pandery. Mm. You know, like, I mean, it's like, oh, isn't Donald Trump bad? Oh, and it's like, there's no craft to it. It's just, all right, you've just, it's um, a big thing called, they call it clapter, which it's like you make a statement that the crowd's obviously going to agree with that they're just going to applaud. So, like, you're not challenging anything. Like, because, I mean, a lot of comedy is born out of rebellion. Um, like, going against the grain, mm. for example. Like, a lot of the greatest, like, you look at, like, Richard Pryor, Pryor George Carlin, they're challenging, like, the status quo. Yes. Whereas, and that's where like the true great comedy comes from. Whereas it's it's so easy just to make an obvious statement and get an applause break, and it's like there's just nothing. No one's learned anything. You're just yelling into an echo chamber. So usually, unless I've got like a really like original take on it, then yeah, I'll just keep away from that. Well, so if people want to find out where you're going to be doing a show or an open mic, how do they reach out to you? How can they stay connected? Um, so I usually post it on my Facebook and then on my Instagram, which is at Simo the Simba. All right. Which you can also find a bunch of like sweaty gym selfies. <laughs> Everybody needs a sweaty gym selfie at least once I a week. Just... <laughs> it's, it's, it's a nice blend of the two. It's like, hey, here's some funny stuff. And then here's me with a shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to check that out. The, uh, the sweaty selfies just... <laughs> and, and, the, and the shows. John, if you could wrap it up for us by telling us what are the pros and cons of living in the U.S. and specifically Atlanta? Um, so in the U.S., I mean, I was always obsessed with America as a kid. So for me, it's just like I feel more at home here than I did in England. Mm, okay. In a weird way because it's – I mean, I was just obsessed with everything. I mean, you get – when I first met up, you got the TV shows and the movies a lot quicker, whereas now it, it does seem to synchronize up a lot more. Mm. So you kind of lose that. Um Soccer games are on in the morning and early afternoon, so you've got the rest of your day to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it's, it's America. It's got so much flavor and variety and so much stuff to do. Like, I love driving. And so, I mean, the drives here on the highways and the interstates are amazing because like, the lanes are wider, your cars are bigger. So it's just, it's very enjoyable getting around and seeing just how big and vast the country is. Uh, best thing about Atlanta, it's got everything. It's got um, so many theaters. So like all the big comedians and bands come through here. You've got uh, Atlanta United, which MLS team, which has like like an average attendance of like 70 plus thousand people, which is Huge. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the standards are not as good as the Premier League and it's not as much animosity, but it's so much more fun to go. Mm. Um, and then, I mean, you've got NBA games, NFL games. Um, there's an ice hockey team that's not NHL, but the step below. Um, I mean, out of season, like the, the football and soccer stadium have all these events. So like they're like monster trucks and motocross, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you go 20 miles outside the city and you can go hiking in some big hills. You're four hours from the, the coast where, with Charleston. So, I mean, it's just, it's a great location. I mean, you can do anything. There's everything to do without having to go everywhere. It's not as expensive as New York. I mean, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And the cons? It's, it gets quite hot. You know, in England, it's a bit too cloudy. In Atlanta, it's just a little bit too hot. But it's like a nice kind of hot. And the traffic is brutal. Um, but, I mean, it's a trade-off, you know. If you're going to live further out and have some more space, then... Yeah, you're going to have some more traffic trying to drive into Atlanta. But, I mean, if you're living, like, in inner London, it's going to be really, really expensive, and you're going to live in, like, a shoebox right. for an apartment. Whereas here, it's you can have some more space regardless, but it might just cost more. If you're going to live further out, I mean, you can live basically in a mansion for a fraction of what it would cost in England. So it's – I mean, yeah, it's definitely – I'd say – 
in many ways, it's a better cost, of, uh, a better kind of standard of living. Okay. For the same price, unless you get sick. <laughs> All right, is, there it is. Flight at the old Atlanta hub and get a nice cheap flight back to England. <laughs> nice. John, listen, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and meeting with us and giving us your experience as an expat in the United States. Appreciate it. Josh, I, I appreciate you, man. It's, it's always good to see your big, handsome smile. Cheers, mate. Talk to you later. <laughs> All right, buddy.